I always find it interesting that people get angry at the discussion of astrology or the astrological symbols that are contained quite clearly, I mean extremely blatantly, in the biblical text that they claim to uh, to adhere to. It's right there in front of them. It tells yep. them different things. I mean, bluntly, some things you gotta, you know, you gotta think your way through and then you see it. Uh, you know, the seasons and things like that. I get it. But some of these things are right there. <laughs> there, there's no well, denying. Let me, yeah, let me throw, uh, let me throw this in. The Apostle Paul, when trying to teach the, the people of his day, the Christians of his day, they thought about him the way a lot of people think about you and me. And he said to them in the scriptures, Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Is that what's happening? If I am here to tell you the truth and I am now your enemy because I tell you the truth? I mean, we now know that uh, the one thing that most people don't want to hear, they want to hear all kinds of things. But the one thing people, generally speaking, have never wanted to hear, and they're not interested to hear today, generally speaking, is the truth. People don't want to hear the truth. They even put it in movies. You know, you can't handle the truth. Well, the idea is that's true. That is a correct understanding of the history of mankind. People turn away from the truth. They don't, don't want to see that they're alcoholics. They don't want to admit it. They don't want to even go near it. They don't, if they're all strung out on drugs, they don't want to talk about the fact that they're a drug addict. They don't want to admit it. They don't want to see it. And people, you know, they're, they're, if they are in business with other people who are criminals, they don't want to see it. They don't want to know what their husband's really doing, what the wife is actually doing. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear that their son or their daughter are prostituting themselves or are selling drugs. Families don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear the truth because you can't handle the truth. Well, and, and so and I also understand violence, that. Jordan, violence is another thing that you don't often mention, but I, I, I think is bears mentioning right here. Uh, and I know you understand this, but you, you know, it's probably one of those things you skip because it should be so obvious to everybody. But violence is something that people are constantly signing off on, supporting. You know, you're waving your flag, right? You gotta support this and that action. You gotta support the war. You gotta support the, the action of the state, which is killing people, which is literally committing violence against individuals whom you will never get to see you will never see reported on in the news and yet people sign off on these things continuously because you know and some of them don't even claim to have a god and they say i'm an atheist and they're lying too because basically they've adopted the state as their god and there's plenty of uh, symbols in That's the state exactly itself right. so you know what uh, the reality is people are signing off on violence all the time being completely disconnected and having it sanitized in their own lives or turned into something which is just what a spectacle for entertainment like you said you know why do people enjoy the most violent of sports why do people enjoy you know movies where there's death and destruction and horrendous things going on because this at least in this way they're sort of experiencing secondhand the reports of violence but the truth is people are signing off on violent activity murder and mayhem across the planet one way or another and they do it continuously and and, and to me, the idea, the lessons, the uh, the concept of being, you know, and I'm going to hold up air quotes here, Christ-like, has nothing to do with being violent, oppressive, uh, taking advantage of, raping, destroying cultures, destroying uh, uh, people just in general. But I mean, destroying everything, uh, even even the wanton destruction of the animal kingdom and a great many things on the planet altogether. People sign off on constantly with their own actions and their own rhetoric, whether they want to accept it or not. Well, like you said, can they handle the truth? Not really. And nobody wants to handle it because it's a little too hot. That's what That's the bottom right. line is, right? That's precisely the bottom line. Is the people don't want to admit the truth. They've heard they, that people want to hear what they want to hear. They don't want to hear what they don't want to hear. So if you're going to be a success in this world and buy jet planes and fly all over the world and vacation 90% of your life away, vacationing on the Riviera and you want to live a high life, then get into religion like Charles, like, uh, like uh, what's his name, uh, who founded the Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron Hubbard, yeah. So if you really want to be wealthy and you want to be a powerful man in this world, you know, start a religion. Because people love 
different stories. And, uh, and Rodney Dangerfield said something I thought was really clever. He said, uh, faith, he said, I learned about faith when I was a kid. And he said, faith is that wonderful quality. What is faith? He said, that's that wonderful quality that allows you to believe something that you know is bullshit, but you believe it anyway because of faith. Then I come to find out, no, you really don't even understand what the word faith means. It's an ancient Greek word, and it doesn't mean what you think it means at all. It has nothing to do with what you, as a Christian, call faith. What you call faith is hoping for something. You're hoping and you're praying that something will happen. You're hoping and you're praying you're hoping. That's not faith. The word faith is a Greek word, which means basically when you get up in the morning, when you wake up, you put your feet on the floor without looking at the floor. That is what an act of, in, in the Greek word is faith, meaning you put your foot on the floor without looking to see if there was a floor. Why? Because it's always been there. I mean, every morning of your life, the floor is there. So it's always been there. So why even think about it? You just get up and do whatever you're going to do and don't even think about the floor. Well, that's what the word faith means in Greek. It means get up and do whatever your heart tells you to do, whatever your spirit wants you to do. Just get up and go do it. Because God has always been there, and God will always be there when you, before your great-grandmother was born and, before, and after you die. That divine presence that we call God has always been here for the millions of years and will be here for millions of years, so you don't have to worry about looking to see if God's here. Just get up and go do whatever the Spirit tells you to do, whatever it is. And if it's and if it's right, then it'll be it'll be uh, successful. And if it's not, it won't be successful. But you have faith. In other words, just get up and do what you think you should do, and that's it. And so that's why we have the story of Jesus walking on water. Right. And if you remember in the story in the Bible, it says that there were a few apostles, and they were all fishermen. And they were in a boat, and Peter was in the boat with them, and they saw Jesus coming, walking toward them on water. And it says, and in the Bible it says, <clears throat> Peter saw it was Jesus, and he's walking on water, so he got out, and he jumped out the boat, and he walked on water. And it says, and Peter was walking on water, doing just fine. He's walking on water, walking toward Jesus, and Jesus is walking on the water toward him. And then it says, and then he looked down. The scripture said, uh, Peter looked down and saw and realized he's walking on water. And you can't do that. Well, he was. He was walking on water until he looked down and saw he was walking, walking on water. Then he began to slip. He began to, to slide into the water. He began, why? And Jesus said, you of little faith. When you have faith, you just got up and come walking toward me, and you were walking on water. But now that you think about it, now that you're looking at what you're doing, you're thinking about it, now you're questioning the integrity and the intelligence of doing something. Now you're starting to slide in. Now you're reaching out to me to help you and to save your life because you're going to drown. Why? Because you've lost your faith. Faith mm. means just get up and do what you want to do. Period. Because whatever you do, that was God's will anyway. 